Right, good evening. We are live on YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter, but we want to bring in our Facebook groups as well. That's the Mile High Huddle, Mile High Huddle Podcast, your daily Denver Broncos coverage, and the Denver Broncos Superfan Group. This is the Mile High Huddle Podcast, and we are spinning. Thank you for being patient for us on, fa- on YouTube. We are live. Welcome in, everybody. This is the Mile High Huddle Podcast. My name is Scott Kennedy. I will be sitting in for Chad Jensen tonight. One of your football priests. The other football priest is here. He's over on this side over here. That's Zach Kelberman. Zach, some news since we last saw each other. We were on together on Sunday night, and then I got to watch you a little bit on Monday. And then uh, here we are back on Thursday, and there's been a lot of news, including a big signing, some pro days, et cetera, et cetera, and one more week closer to the NFL draft. Thank God. Yeah, that's right. I missed you uh, Monday, Scott. Good to have you back in the pilot seat next to me. There has been a lot of news. I guess we can touch on. Well, you did Josh Reynolds this morning, right? I, I'm interested what you think of it, though. So I know what I think of it. I, what What do you think of the the Josh Reynolds signing? Uh, 600 yards last year, five touchdowns, wide receiver, uh, about seven million a year. One year, it's a two year deal, but it's really a one year yeah. effective deal with a club option on the second year. About 12 to 14 total. And seven guaranteed, so that makes it a one-year deal. Uh, what were your thoughts? We'll won't say gut reaction, but what what are your thoughts on the signing for Josh Reynolds? I actually love this signing, Scott. I see some in Broncos country are wondering why they shelled out 14 mil for a receiver, but A, you broke down that's probably a one-year deal. B, even if he maxes out the contract, he's still half as expensive as Jerry Judy would have been, and he's also twice as productive, I think, in crucial moments as Jerry Judy was. He has good hands, contested catchability. He had that drop issue or drops issue in the uh, the playoff game, but other than that, he's like if Cortland Sutton, Scott, and Tim Patrick had a baby, that baby <laughs> would be Josh Reynolds. Yeah, I uh, the, one of the questions we got this morning – was you know what does this do for Cortland Sutton? Because my initial thought was okay, this is this is Tim Patrick insurance. You know, I, my thoughts on yeah. it this morning were this this guy is now wide receiver two. Yeah, because the guy that he he is a legitimate wide receiver two. Mims is a prospect. Tim Patrick has been injured, so if I'm going into a game tomorrow, it's Cortland Sutton one, Josh Reynolds two. Tim Patrick, Cortland Sutton, could we move on from Cortland Sutton still? It'd be a little bit more expensive since you picked up that second guarantee, but still possible. Tim Patrick, you just added $1 million, but you already saved about nine when you basically cut him and re-signed him. It was a restructure. Uh, But I think the only two guys I'd be sure of being on this roster right now are Reynolds and Mims. I'm right there with you, Scott. I took it as more of an indictment on Tim Patrick than I did Cortland Sutton. I feel like if they wanted to trade Sutton or do something with him, they would have done it by now. Maybe during the draft that gets done. But I actually like the top three projected in Sutton, Mims, or Reynolds, and um, and Tim Patrick. And and those four. And then you have the, the bit players like Lil Jordan Humphreys, the Jalen Virgils, the um, Brandon Johnsons. It's suddenly not that terrible of a receiving core with the Reynolds signing. Yeah, I agree. Coming in, you know, this is a pretty good. If you have a second on draft pick, maybe you don't make this move. This is a good draft to have a to take a receiver in the second round. But now I'm looking, okay, well, I don't receiver's not really a need for this team. You can go in. If I say I've got three guys that I believe in, Cortland Sutton's legit. He's he's a, a big time receiver in this league. Josh Reynolds, a, a legitimate pro, and Mims is an exciting prospect. One, two, three. I'm pretty good, especially with the blocking capabilities in the yeah. running game that Sutton and, and Reynolds are going to bring to this team. So personally, I love the signing. I've been poo-pooing free agent wide receiver contracts since, you know, you mentioned half of what Jerry Judy was going to cost. It's a third of what the Denver or the, what the Cleveland Browns are going to pay him. True. You know, a, a fifth rounder and $7 million in Josh Reynolds for Jerry Judy. Okay, I like that move for sure. You know, and then you re-sign him to 20 and a half, two year, 20 and a half million dollars for Cleveland Browns. Good Lord, man. Calvin Ridley for 25 million on two years each year. I mean, those are the guaranteed numbers. Yeah. Good gracious. 
Scott, you mentioned taking care of a need, and it's a good point because the Broncos quietly addressed a lot of their major needs in free agency. It's interesting the needs they haven't addressed, notably quarterback, defensive end, cornerback, and edge rusher, the premier position. So make of that what you will heading into the draft. Yeah, and then there's only so many things you can do, but again, there's enough to get some help on the defensive line. Do you go, can you get your edge and quarterback? Mm, I don't feel great about that one. I think it's, it's going to be one or the other, depending, you know, again, oh, well, I trust Sean to get his guy. Well, there's going to be, if you don't take your quarterback early, and we'll get into Drake May, if you don't trade up to get your quarterback, you're probably getting the second or third pick. If you don't take a quarterback at 12, you might be getting the sixth or seventh pick. You know, is that his guy? Are you that good? Goodness, that would be really, really good. So we go live every day of the week here on the Mile High Huddle podcast between building the Broncos, Broncos for breakfast, orange and blue view, and the Mile High Huddle podcast. Um, and one of the reasons we go live is because we like to have the conversations with y'all. So I want to say hello to a couple of people that have come in bright and early today, like David McElrath, the Papa Bear himself, saying good evening, Broncos country. Chad, Zach, Dylan, and Deacon Scott. Will the Broncos move up in the first round? He says, Buckham times three. Buckham, uh, hashtag uh, Denver Broncos for life and hashtag MHH for life. There sure seems to be a lot of interest in a couple of those quarterbacks that are seemingly out of reach. You know, I mean, I'd, I'll window shop a Ferrari, but I'm not walking in the store. <laughs> so they're in the they're in the building, man. They're They're shopping. They're acting like they're ready to buy. Yeah, David, you know, this is not a shot at you. It's just like we get this question each and every podcast, each and every day, and I wish I had the answer. I, that's why I hope the draft gets here ASAP so we finally have that answer. But if you read the tea leaves as Scott was breaking down, they talked to Jaden Daniels, and Jaden Daniels called Sean Payton the guru. They sent a huge contingent of uh, executives to Drake May's Pro Day today, and Drake May, Scott, is probably going to be a top three pick. So why do that? Have the GM there, the assistant GM there, the OC there. I mean, these are important decision makers. Why would you do that if you weren't at least exploring the idea of trading up and getting your guy? Well, and they've given all the indications that they can trade up. And George Payton flat out said, if you love a guy, you do whatever it takes to get him. I just, I don't know that it's that easy. You know, with, I mean, what would you consider, again, one of the reasons why I don't think it's that easy is because you're not in a vacuum here. This isn't, this isn't just a PFF trade where I just have to make an offer that the other team will accept. I have to make the offer that they'll accept and then hope when they get on the call on the phone to call the Minnesota Vikings or the New York Giants or the, the Vegas Raiders, that it's they don't beat it. Yeah. You know, so it's not just a vacuum in here. So will they move up in the first round? We'll see. I'll tell you one thing. The Atlanta Falcons getting their quarterback out of the way has done you a favor because that's one team that was ahead of you that is not in the quarterback market anymore. That's one team that has removed themselves. Unfortunately, what that did do was put Minnesota for sure in the market. So they and they they're at 11 and they've got 23. So we will see, we'll get into it uh, a little bit more as we move along uh because there'll be plenty of questions in here and not that we have the answers, but we can talk about the possibilities because one of the things I want to ask you is, you know, do whatever it takes. I've seen you say that. I've heard people say that. Well, what what's too much you know is there you know because you can't just you can't you're not allowed to use the qualifier if you're sure because you're not right you know i, I get I'm, i read the chat in here and i told you i get annoyed when people start talking in facts there are no facts in the off season none there's no facts until someone is drafting someone else then that becomes a fact everything else is rumor speculation and proj projection there are no facts. If you love your guy, then you do whatever it takes. Well, if he's going to be this, well, you don't know that. So you got to mitigate your risk a little bit. Sam Bam coming in with that orange Bronco super chat. Love to see Thank it, you, Sam Bam. Hope you're doing well. Hello, Zach and Scott. Podcast, March Madness, draft rumors, opening day of baseball. Got rained out in Philly, probably snowed out. Not sure my sports brain can handle all this craziness. Anyhow, go Broncos. Four weeks from this Thursday until the NFL draft. Four weeks away. It'll come fast. Seems like it's been draft season for a year, but it'll come fast, Zach. 
It will. And uh, enjoy it now, Sam, because after the draft, we're going to hit that lull in the NFL calendar and, uh, you know, baseball season will be underway. There won't be March Madness. So it's a good time to be a sports fan right now. It's a good time to speculate about the Broncos and whether they trade up to the last comment, though, Scott, I, I'm I'll stick to my guns here. I firmly believe if the Broncos identify someone that Sean Payton loves and Sean Payton believes he could be a franchise quarterback for the next decade, do whatever it takes to get him. I'm sure there is a bridge too far. You know, maybe the, the Russell Wilson trade should be the barometer of too far or not too far for, for the Broncos. But I'm thinking, is anyone going to remember the picks they gave up if that quarterback pans out? Even first round picks? No, because the quarterback trumps everyone else. Then I'm thinking, okay, well, you talk about the Vikings and they have more ammo. But if it comes down to a player, Scott, let's say the Cardinals at 4 want a player. Aside from Jefferson, is there a player on the Vikings roster that can match what the Broncos could offer in Patrick Sertan? I don't know. I, don't think I think so. that could be the wild card. Yeah, I don't think so. Um, you know, again, the, the the one there, oh my goodness, you put in Justin Jefferson in there, you know, because they want a receiver in a big way, and they might move down and try and get receivers because it's a, it's a deep draft. Yeah. But, um, you know, Jordan Addison's a good young receiver. Christian Derisaw, left tackle. But do you want to break that up? I think you'd be more willing to, if you've, if you've gotten the indications, we've, we've said this about Pat Sertan, if you've gotten the ind indications that you're not going to be able to re-sign him or you're going to have to tag him and he's going to be unhappy about that, Just you know, then tackle. you've got some discussions on there. Um, you know, Byron Murphy at corner, Cam Bynum at safety, no. I mean, the, 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 the two big ones, for the one big one for each team is Justin Jefferson and Pat Sertan. So if I told you it was going to cost you this year, it was going to cost you number 12 at 2025, number one, and at 2025, number two, and Pat Sertan to move up to number two to take Drake May. And frankly, Washington ain't coming out of that spot. So you're moving up to number three, and you're getting either Drake May or Jaden Daniels or J.J. McCarthy, but not for sure or you get the fourth one, you know, that, that's the thing is when do you make that move? Not knowing who is going to take yeah. whom, because you're not getting number one. You're not getting number two. That's not happening. Washington's not coming out of that spot. Chicago's not coming out of the spot, maybe new England. And then you've got a shot with a, a sale, you know, in a hot market with a lot of teams bidding with Arizona at four. So again, I want my guy. Well, your guy could be gone. So when do you make that move? Do you have to say, I'm good with any one of these four guys, which seems like a stretch if I'm doing anything to get my guy? I think their guy is one of J.J. McCarthy or Drake May, and both of those quarterbacks are going in probably the top eight, you know, at the very at least. I, I just think, you know, you mentioned – a 2024 one, so 12 overall, a 2025 one, and also Pat Sertan. So basically the equivalent of four first round picks, that might be a bridge too far. I would prefer one or the other, give up draft capital alone or throw PS2 in that deal and save a first round pick. That would be going too far unless it's for a generational prospect. But Scott, none of these guys are generational prospects. And I love a lot of them in this draft class. Well, I think generation gets thrown around way too easy. It's uh, there's like Andrew Luck, generational yeah. guys and every, it's just another one of those buzzwords, generational, this generational, that I think you, the word you're looking for is semi-annual because we talk about five of these guys every year, you know, they, so I, I think, you know, what would you consider a generation? I'll, I'll consider it 10 years in, in NFL for quarterbacks every 10 years. Trevor Lawrence was one of those guys. And before that it was Andrew Luck. Drake May and Caleb Williams are the two best since Andrew Luck and Trevor Lawrence. Dude, they're pretty damn good. These are pretty good prospects. They're better than anybody they're thinking about next year, too. So you're talking about three guys in the last 10 years? That's not bad. These guys are pretty good, dude. I think if you put Andrew Luck and Lawrence in this draft, it goes Luck one, Lawrence two, and then Caleb Williams three, and Drake May four. That's kind of my point. There's no, yeah. in my opinion, no Andrew Luck in this draft class. Yeah, Andrew Luck was pretty special, and before then, I, you'd have to start getting into some guys. But you know, that's that's those are the two I think of. Trevor Lawrence was good, and and Trevor Lawrence is a good quarterback. Who's good to us is Michael Ronquillo. Yes, sir. He says, uh, appreciate the stars. Michael, he says, Broncos new wide receiver, Josh Reynolds' uncle is a lifelong Broncos fan and now gets to play for the Broncos. That's really cool when that happens. And uh, he follows up by saying, you know, let's just sign P. 
PS2 now rather than later. Wouldn't surprise me a bit. You can actually lower his cap hit by giving him more money. Right. That's that's the beauty of, of the NFL salary caps. I could cut his salary cap hit from, what is it, 19, 20? I could look it up real quick. The uh, His number on his fifth-year option 20. is 20 on the nose. It's around 20, yeah. Yeah, it's 19.8. So it's uh that's that's twenty. You, you could cut that in half and pick up another ten million dollars if you wanted to, by signing him to a four four year deal. You could you'd sign him to like a six year deal, but four of it would end up being guaranteed, with a uh, hundred and fifty million dollars six year hundred and fifty million dollar deal with a hundred million guaranteed. That's a four year deal at twenty five each. That's about what it's going to cost. That's about what it's going to take, Zach. What I find interesting, though, is that they've been talking about PS2's contract in his fifth year since uh, the end of the season, and then at the Combine, and every month since then. The deadline is May 2nd, and they have not yet officially exercised that fifth year. So I think, Scott, they're planning to see how the draft shakes out, and I agree with you, Michael. If they don't trade PS2 and have no intention of trading PS2, cut the check now and get ahead of the market. It's only going to rise and rise and rise. Yeah, it, it makes sense. I mean, you could... It doesn't do you any harm to go ahead and pick it up now, but that's what you're saying is we're not going to sign you to an untradeable contract if we're going to trade you where, oh yeah, we just signed him to a big, huge contract. Now we've got a hundred million dollar dead cap and we can't move him. Now you can, you know, he's on 19.8 guaranteed. That's affordable. And that's, yeah, that's coming up this year, right? No, he's in the same class. So he's playing on less than that this year. So that's next year. You have two years of control. Two years of control with him. So could happen. Uh, one and two hit. A couple of others coming in here. Phil McLaughlin. Good to see you, Phil. So good evening, Zach and Deacon Scott. After watching the mock draft this morning on Broncos for breakfast, just how realistic do you think it is that we're able to trade back and pull off the winners I saw from that mock? So this morning, we traded back twice and ended up picking up four picks. I think we got a second and a third, and then we got a couple of 25 picks, like another th- two more threes or a third and a fourth in 2025. So we moved back two times. We still took Bo Nix around 23. I think we ended up trading with the, taking one of the Vikings picks. We moved down, I think six or seven spots. And then we moved down again, picked up four picks and Bo Nix. Not trying to rhyme here. Um, I'm certainly not a rapper. That's for sure. And I think it's, People ask, what is your ideal scenario for X team? Brother, that's it. That is it. If I'm able to move down, pick up a bunch of bunch pay, at least another day two, at least a second round pick, maybe do it more than once. You get four. We got four extra picks, man. That's rebuilding and the quarterback that I want. I would much, much rather do that. Now, there's some that'll say, Zach, you can't afford to trade down because Bonex will be gone. Will he though? Will yeah. he? Are you are you willing to lose him? Yeah, if I like Spencer Rattler and Michael Penix just as much, I'm absolutely willing to lose him by trading down. I'm just happy you traded down and still got a quarterback. I'll take Knicks in that scenario. If the Broncos trade down and, and grab like a corner, I'll, I'll be absolutely pissed off. As to how realistic it could be, I think fairly realistic, especially if George Payton gets his way. He was known to trade down a lot in Minnesota and also during his time as Broncos GM. But that's only, Scott, I see that being the case and not just sticking at 12 and taking someone like Knicks or whoever else, if they can't move up for a Drake May, if they can't move up for a McCarthy, then I could see a trade back. Yeah, if, if I think if there's going to be a move, it would almost have to be a draft, a moment that they are on the clock to make that move. Like, listen, we've got a couple deals in place with the New England Patriots. If so-and-so is if these if they take... Caleb Williams and Drake May, we want to trade you this for your number three. If they take Jaden Daniels and Caleb Williams, we want to trade you this. If there's if JJ McCarthy is still on the board at four, we want to trade you this. But you don't make that move beforehand, not knowing who's going to be there. I, I just it, it's going to string out, is what I'm trying to say. String guy, you're probably here. This thing's going to play out to the wire. I think if you're going to move up, if you're going to move up or down, but Draft day moves. This could be a chaotic, a chaotic Thursday night in a month. Rock Chalk Broncos coming in with the super chat. Good to see you, you, Rock Chalk. 
He says, here's hoping the new uniforms will coincide with a new drafted franchise quarterback. I think the key here is, you know, there's everybody's got their favorites. You know, some people end up picking a guy and just go in that direction on this guy. I like this guy, I like this guy. At the end of the day, though, nobody cares. We just want the guy that's going to be a franchise guy. I don't care if it's Michael Penix. I don't care if it's Spencer Rattler. I don't care if it's Bo Nix or J.J. McCarthy or Drake May. I want a Denver Bronco franchise quarterback. That's what I want. Speaking my language now, Scott, for sure. I'm going <laughs> to talk out of both sides of my mouth. I, on one hand, I've seen the rumors of the new uniforms, and they look worse than something you'd see in the XFL. So I hope those rumors aren't true and the Broncos get it right. On the other hand, I don't care what the uniforms look like as long as the Broncos have a franchise quarterback and they put a winning product on the field. I've said it before, and I'll say it again, Scott. They can have pink tutus on, a la Ace Ventura. I don't care as long as they win football games. Yeah, I uh, I won't say I don't care, but it certainly isn't one of the big things that I'm going to look at. Oh, the new Falcons are okay. Great, I'll see them when they get out there. I, I, I I'm yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's because. I don't like the new uniforms. <laughs> it's like, okay, let's go throwback. And it annoys me when they make such a big deal out of the retros. You know, you, you obviously know we like these better with as much as you pump these up. How about changing them back to something closer to, yeah. uh, you know, traditional and, and giving a little bit more difference between the, the different teams? There's sometimes you'll turn them on. You're like, I can't even tell who that is. All these guys look the same these days, especially if they're in their whites. Taylor Christensen, he's got a question for you. Zach, explain why you don't like Michael Penix other than not fitting in a Sean game plan and injury history. That might be it, Taylor. <laughs> I agree, though. Uh, there are QBs ahead of him. Go Denver Broncos. I, I feel like I get this question every pod and every single day on, on Twitter. Just because I'm not hyping up Michael Penix like the others does not mean I don't like Michael Penix. Scott, it's all about tears and perspective, keep, p- keeping things relative. I like Drake May and McCarthy more than Penix, but I like Penix more than Rattler and Milton and Pratt. If Sean Payton determines Penix is the guy, I am rolling with that pick. I don't want him at 12, but there's some things I do like about him, what he brings to the table, but I don't think he's the best fit in a Sean Payton offense in this draft class. And the number one goal when you're searching for a franchise quarterback is getting the guy that best fits the offensive scheme. I don't know that that's Michael Penix. Yeah, and at the end of the day, Taylor, doesn't really matter what Zach thinks. Doesn't really matter what I think. Certainly not going to have any influence on what the Denver Broncos do. We're just trying to help set your expectations based on what we've done with experience. I've been doing this for 20 plus years. And I'm going to get some right. I'm going to get some wrong. But we'll tell you what what we think. Obviously, I've I've never heard Zach be dishonest about something. That's for sure. I mean, I like what you're going to hear, but you're going to get an honest opinion on it. So... For me, with Penix, I know I've asked Nick this a lot. He plays, you know, Nick can see Michael Penix, uh, his home stadium from out of his windows in in Seattle there. And he just, he doesn't like his off-platform throws. If, if, the, if the pocket breaks down, he's in trouble. And that's, that's a bad thing. Um, it's still better than having a Zach Wilson type where if you give him time, he stinks. That's Zach Wilson. Uh, The more time he has, the worse he gets. But I'll tell you what, shoulder injuries and knee injuries combined, missing four different seasons with with season-ending injuries, that scares the hell out of me. You know, the the old phrase, Zach, it's not the age, it's the mileage. Brother's got a lot of mileage on him, and I I know everything hurts on, on me. I've broken 12 different bones. It hurts. It applies in other facets of life as well, Scott, for sure. Uh, I, I just, oh man, it's true that no one, it doesn't really matter what I think. If, if Michael Penix is determined to be the guy, he's the guy. But you mentioned him crumbling under pressure, and that's what soured no, me. Oh, I didn't say that. Oh, 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 like I've seen people say that about the Michigan game. I'm like, the two, the three games I watched, I watched him twice against Oregon. Michael Penix was easily the NFL quarterback in my eyes in those two games. I, I saw it's my opinion. I'm probably wrong, but I saw something a little worrisome in that Michigan game. And I know yeah. Michigan is star studded. They had a great defense, but I wanted a quarterback that hung in there and, and, and responded to the pressure a little better. That's all. 
Yeah, no, and for I didn't say crumbling and people have asked. I don't typically make judgments on one game. You know, oh, well, he was really bad against Georgia and Alabama. Well, Georgia and Alabama have made a lot of guys look really bad. You know, that that's it's a, it is a team game. But yeah, there's there's guys I have it. But Penix for me, it, the big one's the injury history. It's just yeah. there's a lot of mileage on on this poor kid. Um so that's a big one for me. Keith coming in with some stars. Good to see you, Keith, over on Facebook. He says, if the Broncos miss out on the big names in the draft, how likely are they to be in the potential Dak Prescott sweepstakes? A lot of Broncos fans want this to happen, and it's like Stockholm Syndrome. I don't understand. It didn't work with Joe Flacco, Case Keenum, Drew Locke, or excuse me, Teddy Bridgewater, Russell Wilson, but it's going to finally work with a, what, 31-year-old, 32-year-old next year, Dak Prescott, who has a career 2-5 and five playoff record, who chokes in the postseason. Good regular season quarterback, but you're going to pay that guy, Scott, 250 mil at minimum, if not $60 million a year. It's very simple to me. Draft a quarterback and keep drafting quarterbacks until you find that franchise quarterback. Point blank, period. I'm, I'm okay on this, Keith. Again, wants doesn't get. So the, the Denver Broncos said that they were in on some of the free agent guys, but they didn't quite fit their budget. You know, they didn't they didn't go with they they took more than we were comfortable giving, is basically what George Payton said. Yeah. So I'd be how likely are you to be on the potential Dak sweep sweepstakes? Pretty likely. I'd, I'd be in touch with his agent and I would have a contract offer, you know, not even an offer, but discussions. Listen, this is what we're comfortable paying. If you can get somewhere else, more somewhere else, more power to you. But just because you want 60 doesn't mean you will get 60. You're going to get it this year though. Cause that's what he's already in a contract for. So I'd be interested. I'd listen, but I'm not going to break the bank for it. Um, I'd be something like, I'd be interested in something like Kirk Cousins, you know, that, that just got from the Atlanta Falcons. You know, the the four year, one hundred and eighty million dollars is nonsense. You know, I've you can't listen to what you the big numbers because it makes for good headlines and it makes for good headlines for agents. Those are the two people benefiting the most from getting out the bogus numbers. Zach has a uh, Zach. You're Zach. Kirk has a $25 million cap at this year and a $40 million cap at next year. And you can move on from it. Yeah. Okay. You, you do that with two years, four years, $180 million for Dak Prescott with those numbers. Okay. I'm listening because it's 25 and 40 and against almost a $300 million cap hit cap number in two years, three years, Zach, that's not bad. If it gives you a chance to then draft a guy also, Sure, because maybe you don't get your guy this year. Maybe you can't. There's no guarantees. Oh, we just got to get our guy this year. There's no guarantees you'll get your guy this year. So you got to explore every option out there. Would I be in? Yes, but y'all have heard me say I'd be in on everybody. Doesn't mean I would commit any resources to them. There's a limit to all this stuff. Yes, I'd pick up the phone and say, uh, Trey Lance, you want to come throw the football for us and see if you want to be a Denver Bronco? Let's have a discussion. I'm interested. Yeah. I'm not saying I'm going to give him a dollar to do it, but I'm listening. Howie freaking day. He's always listening. He says, evening, gents. I hope we get a winner at quarterback, no matter who it is, and the carousel. Hashtag Buckham. And that's, that's the majority of it, Zach. That's what I was saying. At the end of the day, Broncos country isn't going to care who it is as long as the guy's the dude. Well, I'm going to speak for Broncos country a little bit. I don't think Broncos fans want another Band-Aid. And even if you sign Dak Prescott, how long would you have with him playing elite-level franchise quarterback football? He'll, be, again, be what, 31 or 32 by the time 2025 season rolls around. I think Broncos country, like Howie, wants a young quarterback that's built up and developed in-house that can be around for 8, 10, 12, 15 years. It's time the Broncos do it the right way, Scott, and not throw mm -hmm. good money at a, at a bad problem. Yeah, and when I said that, I meant the prospects, the kids. What uh, about? I don't care if it's Bo Nix, Michael Penix, Spencer yeah. Rattler, Drake May, JJ McCarthy. I don't care. Draw one, and if you get that guy and he becomes the guy, I don't care what the name says. Exactly. That's that. That's that's what I meant by that. Not going after a another veteran. 
Um, but you know, you start talking to me about five years of elite level quarterback play. I'm really interested, dude. <laughs> what is that going to net you though? Two and five playoff record. I don't, maybe I'm biased, Scott, because I covered Dak Prescott mm -hmm. for a couple years, and I just saw a quarterback like Kirk Cousins. You brought him up, good in the regular season, but January rolls around and the guy collapses. That's not the quarterback I want leading the Broncos. When you haven't been, so again, it wasn't my first choice for the Atlanta Falcons. It was like fourth choice, yeah. and honestly, it was my fourth choice, but. At the end of the day, I'm trying to improve with the ways that I can. Right now, playing meaningful football, winning the West, and getting to the playoffs, that sounds pretty good. That, that, that sounds like a step in the right direction. Winning the West with Dak Prescott over Patrick Mahomes? Maybe beat Patrick Mahomes last year. You know, they, they, they might be getting a little bored you know, where they're taking a couple games off during the regular season because they didn't have a great regular season this year. You know, they'll win enough to get in the playoffs and then turn it on. We'll see. It's a but defense. <laughs> right now, getting to the playoffs sounds sounds pretty good to me. That's right what now. we agree on. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so get better. Would Dak Prescott make your team better? Yeah, he would. He would. Am I going to commit a quarter of my – a quarter of my um, salary cap to him? No, I'm not. I don't want to be in the same situation that the Dallas Cowboys are in right now where I'm looking at a $60 million cap hit, dead cap hit. No, no, I want more flexibility for sure. Yeah. Um, but yes, I would be interested. And and I've, I've actually seen more brushback for the, the reasons that you're talking about. I don't want that guy. He can't win the big one. Hell, we haven't played the big one. See, again, I don't root for many macro teams <laughs> when I grew up. The Atlanta Braves got to be like that. It was like, okay, I, I don't watch the playoffs anymore. I watch 162 games, and I turn the playoffs off. Uh, and it became fun, but you know, I grew up in the 80s. Go look up Atlanta Braves and Atlanta Falcons in the 1980s. It was god-awful. Awful. Like, yeah, getting to the playoffs sounds pretty good. I wasn't playing for Super Bowls and all that kind of stuff. So, again, when you haven't you look at, what is it, seven years losing record right now, Zach? Seven in a row? 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Yeah, I mean, you know, how three, three to five years of elite quarterback play would be a step in the right direction. Buy you some time to draft a guy, that's for sure. Well, this is the problem where it becomes like a, a black and white issue, and I mean that figuratively. You have to have one stance or another. Here's the gray area for me. Do I think Dak Prescott's better than a Teddy Bridgewater or a Flacco, Case Keenum, et cetera, Russell Wilson? I absolutely do. Would I pay Dak Prescott $40 million a year? I absolutely would. Would I pay Dak Pre Prescott $55, $60 million a year? No, I would not. So I, I guess I have a line in the sand when it comes to taking on another veteran quarterback and not developing your own and throwing a lot of money at him and hoping that he breaks the curse. Yeah, I, uh, I want to draft guys too. You know, so, and, and again, you bring in Trey Lance for a, a late third round pick. Again, keep loading up the room. Yeah. You know, so if you go with a veteran, go with a rookie too. There's nothing that says you can't do both. Um, Phil coming in. Here's one thing we hadn't talked about with some of the, some of the rules, especially the kickoff rules. Interesting. Appreciate the stars, Phil. He says, do you think the new kickoff rule, it changes how we draft for special teams? I don't think it's going to change how they draft. I mean, maybe they'll use a flyer in the middle rounds on a guy, but the biggest beneficiary of the rule change is Marvin Mims. I, I mean, you're talking about a, what, all pro pro bowler return in, in his rookie season, and now the kickoff rules will benefit return men. I think it's great for the Broncos special teams unit. I'll go back. This is a little bit lesser version from the rant I had. This isn't directed at you, Phil, about the, the Broncos aren't in on. Why aren't they in more on these backup quarterbacks, these retread old guys that aren't good enough to be really starters but spend more money? Because you already did. You, you signed him last year. His name's Jared Stidham. Right. You don't necessarily have to change the way you're drafting now because you got your guy. You already have that guy. You got Marvin Mims already. I think you'll see more teams – use a day three pick on a return specialist. Yeah. Something along those ways where, where they're looking who, who led the, the league. And a lot of times those guys that lead the league and kick off returns, punt returns, et cetera, they're already elite players somewhere else, but not always, not, not always. So I think it will 
you will find a guy where it becomes relevant again. And and for me, I've been saying for five years, just do away with the damned kickoffs or a waste of time. They're annoying. And it kind of became an agenda of mine. This is a step in the right direction. Well, at least they recognize that this was a problem and are willing to do something to try and l- help bring an exciting play back without having the 40 yard running start collisions yeah. that are just car crashes for these guys. And that was my, my other point when it came to the special teams, how it might change. I don't think drafting, but I think the personnel on the field might be different because how is a, a, a six foot, 170 pound guy going to run through a, a running back or a fullback or a linebacker that's on these special teams kickoff units now with the new rule changes? So we'll see on that one. Getting back to the, the top of the show, uh, it, it says, you know, you've probably heard me say before that the smear campaign started early against Caleb Williams didn't work. It's pretty much understood that Caleb Williams is going to go number one overall to the Chicago bears. That seems to be, they may throw a change up out there, a curveball, I guess, anything, something off speed and make and, and fool everybody. But right now it looks like Caleb Williams draft stock isn't going anywhere. So who became the next guy to be the target of, Oh, his stock is falling. Blah, blah, blah. It was Drake may. You do a little search on Drake May on the Twix machine right now, people are going gaga over Drake May again. Oh, it didn't work on him either. These guys have been one and two for 14 months or more. Yep. Drake May's going no lower than three, dude. Scott, you know this better than anyone that it's smokescreen lying season right now. And I think the JJ to Washington hype it too. I think that was a major smokescreen. And I think Drake May stock falling was another smokescreen. You're right. It's been lining up that way for a while. So the Broncos, if they want to move up, they're going to have to get serious about what they're parting with. Uh, how he comes back in with some stars. He says, uh, how he freaking day he says for fit to scheme purposes, Bo Nix or JJ seem to fit Sean Payton's offense. Also get McCaffrey's son to Denver, uh, Luke McCaffrey. He's on uh, PFF, the mock drafts and stuff. He's rated in the 100s, which is too low for me. I would love to use a day three on him, get him fourth round. Absolutely, freaking lutely yeah. how he freaking day. I, I love it. So here's the thing. The, the Sean Payton offense, if I'm taking a quarterback in the first round, you know, unless they're r- predominantly runners, super athletic guys, you know, the scheme doesn't bother me as much. I'm not that interested in They should be scheme independent. A, a, t- a guy you're taking in the top five shouldn't really matter what scheme I'm using for him. Drake May fits schemes with his size and his arm. J.J. McCarthy fits schemes. This guy's athletic enough to be a wide receiver in the NFL. Absolutely he is. He's got that kind of athleticism. Throws on the run. He fits any scheme. Bo Nix, no. I don't see him fitting any scheme. I think he would have to be into a quick passing scheme like Sean Payton. And that's why so many people are saying he might be a fit there. And if not, he's probably not going in the first round at all. That seems to be the consensus. That scares me a little bit with a with a prospect, Zach. Like, oh, well, Sean Payton can make him work, but otherwise, nobody else wants him. Huh. Well, why am I taking him at 12 then? Yeah. Well, you're right. I, when it comes to McCaffrey, I don't know that the need is going to be there after bringing Josh Reynolds in. I mean, maybe if he falls, they'll, we'll take a, a flyer on him, but I don't see them reaching for McCaffrey now. They don't have that need. And you're right, Scott. I would even boil it down to like the top 15. If you take a quarterback in there, he better be scheme independent. He better be knowing what he's doing regardless of what coaches are calling plays in the headset. But if you boil it down to a micro level, what attracts – and I'm speaking for Sean Payton right now – what attracts Payton to Nick's – specifically is the fact that he has a supercomputer and it's located in here. Mm-hmm. And it's a the way he talks about Drew Brees and the processing is the same qualities that Bo Nix possesses. But the other intangibles, J.J. Uh, McCarthy, you mentioned the athleticism, the throwing off platform, the, the leadership, the intangibles, and also the upside with how young he is. That also is appealing to Sean Payton. So Howie, and this is my opinion, maybe Scott disagrees, if they end up with either Knicks or JJ, no matter where, if Sean Payton thinks that's the guy, I'll be content. Yeah, and I just, I I don't want, 
I worry a little bit they're going to talk themselves into it because the need is so big. There's some of this, the bias starts, we've got to have a quarterback. Okay, I really like this guy who's going to be the fifth choice. Okay, well, maybe you do, maybe you don't. Um, you know, to order to hedge that, that's why we talk about trading back or, or being able to get him a little bit later. Why does that make sense if he's a guy? Because we're not sure he's the guy. That's yeah. that's why. There are no sure things. Like I said, there there are no facts in the spring. There's projections, there's lies, there's all kinds of stuff, but there are no facts until someone gets drafted. Then it becomes a fact that so-and-so drafted somebody. Oh, Sean Payton really likes this guy, but he never really liked that guy. You don't know that. That's ridiculous. How can you say something like that? It's, it's all BS right now. So for scheme purposes, JJ is scheme independent. Drake May, scheme independent. Caleb Williams, scheme independent. Jaden Daniels, probably pretty scheme independent. After that, those are the four. After that, and, and I feel that way about the first round, no matter the position. Well, he runs inside zone, but man, if I have to worry about penciling him into a scheme, he ain't good enough for me to take in the top 10. He's been good enough to us, though. Danny Powers, he says, I know Sean Payton. We are going to trade up with the Cardinals. I know it's going to cost an arm and a leg for the next few drafts, but he is going to go get J.J. McCarthy. J.J. McCarthy is a hell of a prospect. He really is. Uh, he's thrown plenty. Just look at the first half. So there's somebody that breaks down his numbers on why did he throw more? He was like 7% of his throws were in the fourth quarter. They were blowing teams out. Um, they didn't have to. When you're 29-1, and one, I'm not questioning why didn't they do this more? Because they didn't have to. They didn't, they didn't win. I, Zach, I think I've told you this story. When I first started covering recruiting, I, I called up a kid. He ran for like, 2,800 yards rushing, you know, some of those gaga high school foot numbers. I'm like, what about receiving? He had five, five catches for 115 yards. I'm like, that's it. And then I started thinking, I'm like, well, why am I going to throw the ball to him when he's averaging 16 yards a carry when I turn around and hand it to him? Well, he's not much of a receiver. He's averaging 20 yards a carry. Why am I throwing him the ball? Yeah. You're winning 29 games in a, in a playoff championship. I didn't have to air it out more often. And when they did, they did. I'm a big fan of JJ McCarthy, and I think I think Denver Broncos would be too. You mentioned that there's no facts right now, Scott. I think there's three facts that we can all agree on as certainties. Number one, the Broncos need a quarterback. Number two, Sean Payton is still a little jaded for missing out on Patrick Mahomes in 2017. He was one pick away from drafting him. He wanted to move up, and the, he got sniped by Kansas City. His ego won't allow that to happen again, in my opinion. Number three, Sean Payton, as he admitted, is on a first-name basis with Monty Ossonfort, the Cardinals general manager, who also made it clear that they're open for business and moving down. So I just dot, dot, dot. That's all I'm going to say. Let's see what happens next. At number four, that gives you either J.J. McCarthy, Drake May, or Jaden Daniels. So you better like all of them. Uh, Danny... Two first rounders and Pat Sertan. Too much. Because that's what I think it, I think that's what it's gonna end up costing you. Maybe three first rounders, and you're able to hold on to Sertan. 2024, 2025, 2026. I'd rather do that than give up Sertan. Yeah. So, I don't know. That's tough. But you you're talking about uh, the over under. We haven't hit on this. The over under for Broncos win totals right now is five and a half. Right now, people are saying it's gonna next year's is gonna be a top seven. Top eight pick next year. That hurt watching Seattle draft use your your draft pick on that when it was yours, didn't it? You know, it, it, at least you have a young quarterback that you think can improve and go with. What sucks is when you're losing and you don't even get to root for a higher draft pick. But it's not as bad when you're like, okay, well, we got our young guy. He's going to be moving forward. Lauren Rivera, honestly, what saved Sean and uh, appreciate the stars in New Orleans was Drew Brees' ability to throw in under five seconds and his audibles. So we've talked about that with Bo Nix being able, one of the things he does really well is pick out the, the matchup. Who's going to be open in this set on this play when I'm going four wide and running back? What's going to be the open guy? You don't throw for 45, 48 touchdowns and three interceptions without knowing where to get the ball. That said, Lawrence, you need to cut that number of five and half of uh, it's usually about two to two and a half seconds to throw the ball. And there's a reason why Michael Thomas name became uh, the slant God was because those are first reads. Okay. I look over, 
I see, I call my audible on there and I'm coming to the slant. That is a three step, three step fire type of throw. Yeah, you're not getting five seconds. It's more like two and a half at most to get rid of the ball. Five seconds is a scramble. This is the chicken or the egg, though, to me, Lawrence. Does the coach make the quarterback or the quarterback makes the coach? We saw Drew Brees, what he was in San Diego at the time, and he was a very good quarterback, no question about that. He got to New Orleans and under Sean Payton's wing, and he became an elite quarterback. I still think Sean Payton doesn't get enough credit for the development of Drew Brees. Uh, and he follows up, if it comes down to it, if Jaden Daniels is only QB left, do you think Sean will take him? If you move up and use all that to four, and this is why we said you don't make that trade until you've got an idea when you're on the clock, who's going to be there? Unless you like all four quarterbacks, if you're okay with any of the four, then it's okay. But if you trade up to four and it goes Williams, McCarthy, May, and you're taking Jaden Daniels. So I'd be pretty happy. I'd be really damn happy with Jaden Daniels. I'd be happy. He has to do something with that elbow, though. Have you seen the picture? I have not seen the picture. Can we pull it up for the audience, please? His elbow is... I don't know what I'm looking for. Just search Jaden Daniels on Twitter. And uh, I, I read that it was like elbow bursitis. It's not a problem. It doesn't affect his throwing motion. It just looks really bad. I don't know, though, that he's Sean Payton's type of quarterback. I don't I know that... Jaden Daniels, an elbow pops in automatically. There we go. I don't know that Sean Payton wants Lamar Jackson. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Oh my what goodness. What is that? Um that that <laughs> is to ruin your night. Tommy John waiting to happen. <laughs> and there's some crazy things if you do stop motion. All right, if you're eating, look away. Share screen. Even if you're not eating. It's pretty bad. What is that? There's uh if you watch pitchers when they get stop motion like that, you wonder how their arm doesn't come flying off their arms. You know, it doesn't just fall to pieces. And a lot of times these days with these guys all throwing 97 plus, it is coming to pieces. They're all getting uh Tommy John surgery, UCLs. Right? I point to the screen, it won't do any good, but right here is uh yeah. So <laughs> that that looks that looks photoshopped. That looks crazy. Yeah. So all right. Now I'm scary. a little sick to my stomach. Sorry about that. Go away. It's not the first <laughs> time I've had to go, oh, get it off the screen, man. But that's a different story. Uh <laughs> David Duncan coming in. Good to see you, David. He says, okay, Scott, since you said five wins, then why would you give up a first if you're going to be a top eight pick? Comes a question because obviously you think I don't particularly like the quarterback class next year. That's a factor. I'm also arrogant enough to think that I'm not going to just win five games. And I didn't, I said five because that's what different draft, uh, different bookmakers are putting the Broncos at. They're putting them at five and a half. I've seen it twice now. So you want to give up that 2025 number one? It's a pretty good chance. Right now, odds makers say it's going to be a top five pick. So number 12 and number five, and you're going to have to throw in another number one at least to, to get up into the top four if you want to hold on to Sertan. I see Christian Parker's burner making me laugh. You got to relax, bro. We're talking about Jaden Daniels' uh, elbow. The thing is with these um, record prediction, win predictions, like if you told me, I said this before, like, oh, they're predicting five wins. I'm like, and? That isn't that what we expected after eight years to finally mm -hmm. go through a rebuilding phase where you take your lumps. I will say this, Scott, if the Broncos end up five and 12 with a rookie quarterback going through the trial and error, I'm okay with suffering through 2024. If they go through a five and 12 season with Stidham or Tannehill or insert name here, that is unacceptable. In my opinion, it's a waste of a season. You know, it would be awesome. It won't. The Broncos, I think are better than this, but you know, this was one of the best seasons I ever saw for a team that stunk was Deshaun Watson in 2020. They were four and 12 and he had almost 5,000 yards with 33 touchdowns against seven interceptions. Their defense must have just been God awful. Um, That'd be kind of fun. You'd have a lot to, if you were to win your five, say instead of your five and 12, you get an extra game now. 
you get a rookie quarterback that throws for 4,500 yards with a almost a five to one touchdown interception ratio. I'm excited. I don't mind that I don't have my draft pick coming up. So again, what sucks is when you make a trade for a guy who is older and there's doubts coming along with it and it goes up in smoke and you're like, oh God. What's fun is having a young quarterback on the ascension and you've got a light at the end of the tunnel. That's not just a train. Shout out to Metallica. Gary Palmer coming in. He says, love you guys. Great show. Go Broncos. It's better now, Gary. Glad you are here. Uh, real quick, we titled the show around, uh, we're going we're gonna to finish you off, Michael. I see those big stars. It lights up when you go big stars on Facebook. And Michael just set off my computer like a pinball machine. So thank you, my friend. We'll, uh, we'll close the show out with your great stars contribution. Uh, but again, we, we titled the show around Drake May. So that's how we're going to close it. Lots of Denver Broncos in Chapel Hill watching Drake May, including general manager George Payton, assistant GM Darren Mogi. Uh, shout out to Zach, Zach Stevens, uh, DNVR, uh, on Twix for this. Uh, OC Joe Lombardi, quarterback coach Davis Webb, and senior assistant Pete Carmichael. They're making the rounds, Zach. We know they're in the market for a quarterback. Drake May would be, Drake May would be a dream, dude. Now compare that contingent to who was at Michael Penix's pro day. I know it was on the same day and they can't be both places at the same time, but at Penix's you had a scout and I think the passing game coordinator, John Morton. That's that's pretty much it. The contingent at uh, Drake May's pro day was pretty telling. I think there's a significant amount of interest in him and Sean Payton will uh, get him or die trying Scott in the draft. Yeah, and you wonder, Gary and 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 everybody, you wonder a little bit why. Um, because... And I'm not saying Michael Penix because what I am saying is the Washington Huskies have about six or seven guys that are going to be drafted. Yeah. So same day, that's why. There, there's your answer, Zach. You already answered it for me. You can only have so many guys in so many places, and uh, they decided to prioritize UNC. I mean, if they like Penix more, I feel like you know Peyton and Mogi and company would be there, and not Chapel Hill. But we'll see on April 25th. So on that note, Zach, I think we're about ready to get out of here. I'm glad I got to spend some time with you yes, and y'all tonight because this is the last time I'm going to be on MHH for almost two weeks. Exactly two weeks, actually. I'll be back on MHH two weeks from today, Thursday morning, because I'll be out next week, and then I'm off on Monday the following week. So not till next Thursday, since we're just doing Broncos for breakfast on Mondays and Thursdays right now. I want to finish off by saying fantastic thank you to Michael Ranquillo, getting us started this morning, Finish us, finish us, finishing us off tonight. My voice is about finished, it sounds like. Great show tonight, Zach and Scott, on the Mile High Huddle podcast. Go Broncos. Thank you so much, Michael. MHH Superstar, Mount Rushmore, all those good things. Appreciate you. Well, I think I could speak for everyone, Scott, when I say we're going to miss you these next two weeks, but it, it's always fun recording with you, potting with you. That was another Regardless, tremendous installment of the Mile High Huddle podcast. If you're not doing so, please follow us on Twitter, X, whatever, at the MHH pod. You can follow the main account on Twitter, X, whatever, at Mile High Huddle. Scott is at Scout Kennedy. I'm at Kelberman NFL. If you haven't yet, cop some MHH merch at MHHmerch.com. Pretty simple enough. Also, drop us a like. There you go. Coffee cup, MHHmerch.com. Drop us a like at facebook.com slash mile high huddle pod. You can also find us on Instagram at mile underscore high underscore huddle. If you're listening on Apple podcasts, make sure you're leaving your football priest and our Deacon Scott, a five star review for a chance to win some of that merch each and every single month. But if anything, y'all please subscribe, like, and share this video and every video you see on the MHH channel. It really helps us grow and reach more Broncos fans. Just like you. Appreciate you, Zach. A couple light, late starts coming in from Phil. He says, uh, have a great vacation. Thank you. Lawrence says, dang, Scott, who's going to disagree with me now? See, Lawrence, I know you like to think that I'm disagreeing with you, but I'm not. I'm correcting you. See, you're screwing up facts. That's me correcting you, not disagreeing. This is saying the sky is green. No, Lawrence, it's not green. It's blue. You get five seconds to throw. No, you don't, Lawrence. You get two and a half. That's not disagreeing. Those are correcting. So that's me correcting your misinformation. Instead, someone else is going to have to do that while I'm gone. I volunteer. <laughs>
I'll see you then, Lawrence. But I think we're out of here for tonight. We will be back on Sunday night. Uh, tomorrow is Dove Valley Deep Divers. Saturday night is Orange and Blue View, Tongue Twister. And Sunday night, Scott, Chad and I, it's getting confusing now. Chad and I will be back on normal time slot, 6 p.m. Mountain, 8 p.m. Eastern. Have a great weekend. We'll see you then. Take care. And as always, go Broncos.